Okay, now, um, each column in the decision table says, under this particular combination of conditions, take these actions and don't take those actions. So for example, take a look at seven, column seven. If it's a real account, but not an active account, it's not within limit, and location is not okay, then do not approve the transaction. Uh, call the cardholder and call the vendor. Um, rule number one, it's a so-called happy path. It's a real credit card account. It is active. It is within its credit limit, and the location of the charge is fine. Approve the charge. Do not call the cardholder. Do not call the vendor. Okay, so we've got that decision table. Either we constructed it ourselves or the nice business analysts or requirements engineers who created the uh, design and requirement specification gave it to us. Um, so either it was given to us or we made it ourselves, but now we have it and we can uh, create tests from it. And basically what you do is you just read column by column and say, okay, I'm going to create input values and preconditions that create the conditions. Um, and then I'm going to verify the actions. I'm going to methodically step through column by column um, doing that, either creating concrete test cases from the from each column, or uh, perhaps I'll um, just decide to um, use the decision table as a form of logical test case if I can create the values that way and just read the values right onto the, the uh, test. So um, that's, uh, that's certainly possible. If you're able to do that, just you know, on the fly, read the values of the column and then create the test from it, then, then you can do that as well. But the important thing is that you have to have at least one test per column. Now, you might generate more than one test per column, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, now, if we, uh, if we look at this thing, uh, this table, we have um, some nonsensical columns. Account not real, but account active. Let's go back here and take a look at that. Uh, how, how, how exactly would that exist? And the account is not real. The account is active. And we have a number of these kinds of combinations here, which are sort of nonsensical. And how could it be not real, active, and within limit? Or for that matter, out of limit. Um, I mean, what would it mean? If the account doesn't exist, so does it have a limit? Uh, and how could the location be okay if it's not a real account? And the whole concept of a location being acceptable is, has to do with the property of the cardholder and where one would expect the cardholder to be making charges. So uh, we have some, some nonsense here. Uh, and of course, that makes sense. I mean, we generated all the combinations. So it wasn't any guarantee that some of those combinations weren't going to be nonsensical. So maybe you say, well, hmm, in the case of these nonsensical combinations, you know, I can't actually create those from a test point of view. And so I can look at them and say, hmm, all right, well, I can't make this happen. And therefore, you know, one would presume that the charges would not be approved. Now, of course, the right actions would not be taken um, in the sense that there wouldn't be any actions taken because couldn't happen. So maybe these full decision tables, while a useful starting point to assure ourselves that all of the combinations of conditions have been uh, covered, are actually not useful from a test point of view because they contain a lot of unachievable tests. So this brings us to the concept of collapsing a decision table. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to look for um, combinations of uh, particular conditions where, where one of the conditions, or maybe two of the conditions, or more of the conditions, actually cannot affect the actions um, that will, will occur under a particular set of circumstances. And so I can, um, in that case, say that a particular condition in the overall set of conditions is has a don't care uh, or doesn't matter or can't happen value. Um, and, and replace that particular condition uh, with a, a dash or a tilde to, to indicate that, um, and then collapse the two columns together. So uh, this is a tricky procedure, potentially, because uh, it's 
certainly not impossible to make mistakes here. So one must be careful when you're doing it. Um, now, the, the, the decision tables often have the property where combinable col columns will be right next to each other in the table. So you start off by looking at, at columns that are right next to each other and say, well, is one of the conditions here not actually affect the uh, action uh, to be taken? And if so, can I then squeeze these two together, these two columns together, replacing the condition or conditions that don't matter with a dash um, and, and keeping the conditions that do matter uh, unique. And methodically, you can walk through the table and um, try to, to collapse, um, collapse the columns. And you continue this process until there's uh, either no no, no columns that share any sort of uh, uh, combination of actions in common. So if you look at the particular combination of actions to be taken, there's, they're all unique. Uh, then they clearly, in that case, there could be no collapse. Um, but what more, you're more likely to run into first with this attempt to collapse is the erasure of an important distinction. Um, and so you have to, when you go to collapse, you have to test whether um, that the collapsed column that you are proposing would indeed handle the uh, same situations the same way as the non-collapsed ones. Uh, and this is very important because if that is not the case, then you are erasing an important distinction in the table. And of course, the, your collapsed table is not actually logically equivalent to the, the full table, which you know that thus makes it uh, wrong. <laughs> Um, so uh, that's important. We'll look at an example of that. Now, y you have to be particularly careful with tables that have what I refer to as non-exclusive rules. And I'll show you an example of this a little later. Uh, but briefly, a non-exclusive rule is the case where um, two or more columns in the decision table can apply to a given situation. And uh, I'll show you how that works. Um, We'll set that aside for the moment. And let's look at the collapsed decision table for the full decision table we looked at previously. Now, uh, I've retained the original column numbers at the top so that you can uh, reference back more conveniently to the uh, full table. So this um, gives us some trickiness here, potentially. Notice that at Rule 3, Rule 4 collapsed into it. Because the difference between Rule 3 and Rule 4 was just whether the location was OK or not. But in either case, the transaction would not be approved. The cardholder would not be called, uh, or would be called, excuse me, and the vendor would not be called. So let's um, pop back to look at this in the full table here. Um, so if we look at, in the full table, rules three and four, you see that's the only difference there. The question of whether the location's OK or not, right? And the actions to be taken are identical. Oops, let's draw inside the lines here if I should. Um, so um, we can collapse those two. Now, uh, let's go forward. Okay, so we got three.